Sure, we want to get the true story out on Mihailovich. The key word is okay. My name is Arthur Javillian. I started out in the United States Navy in World War II. I volunteered for OSS, which stands for the Office of Strategic Services, which is now the CIA. As a member of the CIA, or OSS really at the time, I volunteered to go into Yugoslavia on what a mission that was called a Halyard mission. This was to uh, evacuate 50 airmen, American airmen, who had been shot down and were now being harbored in an area called Pranjani. We finally made it into Pranjani on August the 2nd, 1944. And we found not 50 American airmen, but 250 American airmen. They had been sheltered there and protected by General Mihailovich. The Serbian people, and I cannot say enough about them now, had also sheltered them and protected them against the Germans, and they fed them uh, out of their own rations that they really couldn't afford to do. Because you must remember that the Serbs had been raped by the Germans, ravaged by a civil war, and they didn't have two nickels to rub together. But as poor as they were, and as much as they lacked for their own personal well-being, they still shared with our Americans. And if they were wounded, they gave their bed up to the Americans. And I get a little emotional sometimes when I talk about them. But they slept on the floor while our American boys slept in their beds. They fed them food that they needed for their own family so that our boys would be fed. So this documentary, I want to emphasize that we as a nation owe the Serbian people, and we cannot say that about very many nations. Most of the nations in this world owe us because we have helped them with money and supplies and so forth. But we owe the Serbs because they took care of our boys in a manner that no one else could have done. So enough of the Serbs, I guess, because I love them to death. I can't, if I go on, I will talk about them too much. So let me go on with our mission. Um, we were supposed to be in there only for 10 days to bring out these 250 airmen. But when we got there and met Mihailovich, he told us that we have, uh, that he has five men here, 10 men, Americans, that had been shot down throughout his area. And that if we wanted to stay, he would have them funneled into us so that we could evacuate him. So this is, we received permission to stay in. And let me back up on that 250 men that we evacuated. Uh, we started out on August the 9th, actually, and brought four planes in. But it was a nighttime evacuation, and it was very, very dangerous. Um, and we lo almost lost a plane, so we decided we, were not, we weren't going to complete it that night, and we do a daylight eva evacuation the next day. In the meantime, we decided there's a German garrison at Chachak, which is about 20 miles away, and we decided we better have uh, some fighter planes and uh, dive bomb and strafe them so they couldn't send a garrison or a, a, a contingent out to, to uh, intercept the planes and, and make us lose some of our pilots and downed airmen. So this is what happened. Uh, the C-47s came in, 14 of them the next day, with a squadron of P-38s and P-51s. The fighter pilots uh, dive-bombed and strafed Chachak. The C-47s came in and landed. We loaded them up and uh, they took off. The fighter planes came back and sort of gave us an aerial show to let us know they were on their way back to escort the, the C-47s back to Italy. And uh, uh, we, got, we, we were very happy to have a, a safe uh, evacuation without losing a man or a plane. So in the meantime, as I started to say, the um, highway said there were other airmen that were shot down that were throughout his area. And if we wanted to stay, he would funnel them to us and we could evacuate him. So we received permission to stay, and what started out as a 10-day mission ended up as almost six months. We stayed from the 2nd of August to the 27th of December, 1944, during which time we brought out 513 American airmen, 
and a whole bunch of, uh, I can't tell you the exact number, but we brought out some English and some Italians and some, a few French, uh, a few Russians. Uh, we brought out a, a variety of people, not very many, but some. And they were, of course, in, interrogated when they got back to Italy to see what kind of uh, information they, they would have. Um, while we were there, uh, we were in, informed that we must not promise Mihailovic anything. This was no political thing. We could promise him nothing as far as aid was concerned. This was just an evacuation. And we felt pretty badly about this because here this guy was risking his life, protecting our boys, doing all he could to bring our, our boys back home. And we weren't doing anything uh, to help him. The partisans, in the meantime, were getting all the supplies from the allies and they were using these supplies to fight the, the Chetniks, and they were gradually pushing us away from Pranjani. We finally had to give up the airport because the, the partisans were getting too close. So we moved, the next evacuation we had was at Koselyovo, um, and that was a, a, a very risky one. But we managed to, uh, uh, to evacuate another 40, some airmen out of there. And uh, then we continued on uh, through moving up towards, uh, up north towards Belgrade. And we ended up in Bosnia, Herzegovina actually. And um, we had a, a, a great number of boys that were wounded that we managed to evacuate. When, on the December 27th, we finally were ordered to come out. We brought out I think 40, 20 in each plane, but I think we got out about with 20 or 40 American airmen. And we went, before we went out, I mean, let me backtrack. We asked Mr. General Mihailovich, we said, you know, you're, you're, it's a lost cause here. Why don't you come out with us and continue our fight for freedom in the free world? And he said, no. He said, I'm a soldier. This is my country. This is where I will live and die. So we couldn't, we couldn't convince him to come out. And again, I think he got such a raw deal that my sense of justice makes me want to, makes me cry actually. So anyway, we got out and uh, my mission with, with OSS was over with. So they turned me back over to the, the United States Navy and the war ended and uh, the Navy discharged me. I got a job in Washington, D.C. Uh, with the Veterans Administration. And one morning I picked up the Washington Post. And on the front page was a little article by Ye Big that said the, fire, the forces of Marshal Tito have captured General Draja Mihailovic. Well, I had been told that I wasn't to discuss this Halyard mission with anyone but I knew what was in store for Mihailovic. So against orders, I went down to the Washington Post. I asked to see the editor. And I said, sir, th this is my story. And I told him about the Halyard mission. And I concluded my remarks by saying, if he's a traitor and a collaborator, I'm a traitor and a collaborator too. Put me on trial with him. Well, Washington is a what I call it, lobby town. It's very political. I'm one little guy. I had no political clout. I'm all by myself, and it didn't catch up. Unfor uh, but fortunately, the local newspaper in Toledo, Ohio, where I was raised, picked up the story and did publish it in the Toledo Blade. So there's, there was an article about it in the Toledo Blade. But fortunately for me, these 500 airmen that we had uh, rescued, they kept in touch with one another, and they formed a committee, uh, and they met in Fort Stevenson in Chicago, and uh, they sent a delegation, there were 20, I think it was 20 or 21 guys, into Washington, and they contacted me also, and we decided we were going to see our congressmen, our representatives, and the State Department, and we were going to do all we could to get ourselves to testify 
at Mihailovich's trial. Well, we tried. We got we contacted our senators and our representatives, and they tried. Uh, the State Department sent several letters to Tito, you know, his government, and we got a reply. This is an internal affair. Uh, you don't need to bother yourself with it. Uh, so they rejected us. We sent another message over. Again, we were rejected. We sent another message that said, "We've got," and they replied, "We've got enough evidence." To convict him, we don't need any more evidence, which was turning the the whole story around, uh, which is what we. So finally, we said, okay, we asked for three things: get the trial out of Belgrade so he can get a fair trial, allow the OSS personnel to testify, allow the airmen that had been shot down to testify, because the ulterior motive we had, if we could just let Mihailovich know that we had not forgotten him, that we still appreciated him. At least he would have that knowledge. He would know that. And we know he was cooped up. We know he was incommunicado. But if he could just learn that we were fighting for him, that we had not forgotten him, this would go so much towards easing his last few moments of his life because we knew it was just a question of time when he would be executed. Perhaps murdered would be a better word rather than executed, because that's what he was. Um, so in spite of our best efforts, um, it was in vain, and he was executed by firing squad. I'm told they gouged his eyes out before they, before they acted. I don't know how true this is. Uh, I'm also told that the lawyer that uh, defended him was shot. Uh, again, I don't know how true this is, but it makes sense. It's that's the way the the partisans would operate. So after this, um, I was making speeches at various Serbian church churches, and any time anybody would listen to me to get publicity for them, and uh, Greg Freeman got a hold of uh, of one of my articles in in one of the papers. And he contacted me, and I gave him a lot of the pictures that I had, and gave him the information. And he was, he's the only one, there are many, many people, said they were gonna write a story or make a movie or write a book, you know. But he's the only one that actually did this. So we have the forgotten 500 now. But let me back up just a minute also here. Back in 2004, I received an invitation from the uh, Serbian government to attend Pranjani again, the 60th anniversary of the evacuation of the American airmen at Pranjani. And they wanted to dedicate the, uh, the airfield uh, at Pranjani, and they wanted me and some of the men to be there at the time. So my wife and I were, went to Serbia. We were given very good treatment, I tell you. I mean, I starved to death almost my, my mission into Yugoslavia when I parachuted in, but they made up for it this time. I tell you, they fed me till it came out of my ears. But anyway, we, we, uh, we had the dedication, and at the dedication, I gotta tell you one thing. They, they didn't have any music, they had a choir there, and they sang Akapalko, you know, without any music. And I get goosebumps and, and a lump in my throat when I think about it. They played the Serbian national anthem and then they played the American national anthem. And as I stood there at attention uh, in the hills of Ravnagor, without thinking of Muslin and Lalic and Ryasic and Mihailovic, the tears came to my eyes. I'm not ashamed to admit it. They were no longer there. I was the last survivor of the Halyard mission. And oh, if they could have been there. But anyway, we, we dedicated the airfield and we didn't get the publicity we should have gotten out of it. Again, it wasn't, it wasn't given to the publicity that it deserved. So we came back to the United States and I told my wife, well, at least you got a chance to see the Serbs to see the airfield that we were talked about, to talk to some of the people and how gracious and wonderful they are. And then six months later, I got another invitation from the Serbian people. This one was to 
help in the presentation of the Legion of Merit to Mihailovich's daughter. Let me back up on that. In 1948, at the request of General Dwight Eisenhower, President Truman awarded the Legion of Merit to General Draja Mihailovich uh, for what he had done uh, in helping the Allies and the Allied Airmen. Because of the, I call it a hostile government, people say it's the, uh, don't, don't like me to call it a hostile government, but that's what it was, pure and simple. We, this medal could not be delivered to Mihailovich's daughter. 57 years later, in 2005, we, again, a contingent of four or five of us, of the airmen who had been shot down, and myself and George Voinovich, uh, went to uh, uh, Yugoslavia, to Belgrade, and presented the medal to Dr. Gordana Mihailovic uh, in honor of her, her dad. And um, this was a very, very emotional one because I had prepared an L album with some of the pictures that Alan, a photographer, had, had given us back uh, 1945 and I presented it to her I thought she might appreciate it and she very much did she uh, gave the uh, album to the Serbian church to the uh, what are the patriarch for safekeeping uh, and let me digress here a minute I was showing this album to some of the members of the uh, rescued airmen that had that were there also and again, one of the highlights of my moment, one of the highlight moments of my life, uh, Claire Musgrove's grandson was looking at the pictures and he turned to me and he said, you know, if it weren't for Mihailovich and for you, the OSS and you, uh, I wouldn't be here. Well, I tell you what, I mean, to have a person tell you that, it's very, very touching to say the least. And I guess I'm kind of an emotional guy. I don't mean to be, but, I can't help it. I I can stand a lot of hardship, but I I can't stand much kindness, unfortunately. Okay, getting back to um, Claire Musgrove and his grandson, I was very happy to to uh, hear this. And we uh, again we presented this medal to to uh, 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 Dr. Mihailovich, but there was no publicity for it. Uh, it was all almost like a secret mission of ours, you know, and I, I couldn't understand it. I was told by the, by the ambassador, we had dinner with him the night before, and he said, well, we're in delicate negotiations with Bosnia-Herzegovina, and uh, Kosovo was entering into the picture, the Macedonians, and I don't know what all, and I said, well, it, that's beside the point. That's, that has nothing to do with Mihailovic and the rescue me. The truth is the truth is the truth. These, this happened. Let's just, I mean, let the chips fall where they may. This is what, if, if they have proof that he was a collaborator, I welcome it. Let's bring it out in the open instead of putting a lid on everything and not, not letting everyone be heard. Uh, I am biased, I admit this fully. I'm a Mihailovich man, I'm a Mihailovich believer. But if they can prove to me that he was a collaborator, I will try and keep an open mind. I will try and keep an open mind. But God bless it, let's get it out. Why cover it up? What's the big secret? I'm sorry, I don't mean to get on it. So Let me so. ask you something. Uh, what do you make of that British, uh, you know, cover up and uh, the which cover up? Uh, well, the British who were basically sabotaging this whole mission and uh, their Oh, role, the British. Their role, the British, yeah, the British. Okay, let me say this. Well, and what's I, your feeling about that? My feeling is very, I'm very bitter with the British because when we were told that there were 50 Americans in Pranjani, we immediately started to make plans. They asked me if I would go in as a, as a radio man and I said, in a heartbeat. So we started to make plans to go in. This was in July. Now, British had operation of the airfields there. Everything had to go through the British because they controlled what went where. And 
I cannot prove what I'm about to say. This is my personal feelings, my personal opinions. But the first time we got on a plane with British approval, they didn't want us to go in the first place. They, we were told that bluntly. Uh, Donovan and Roosevelt were talking about it, and Roosevelt told Donovan, uh, our British cousins do not want us to go on this mission. And Donovan being Donovan said, screw the British, let's get our boys out of here. So we tried to go out in, uh, oh, I don't know now whether it's the 2nd, 3rd of July, somewhere in there. And I, I, I don't know for sure the sequence, but one time we went out, we were met with anti-aircraft fire. So we had to abort the mission and come back. The next, excuse me, the next time we went out, they wanted us to literally jump into a lake at the coordinates. So we had to abort the mission again and come out. And the third time we went out, um, there was obviously we were gunfire. There was obviously a battle going on. So at this they were point, giving you the wrong information where to. Yeah, we could see the battle going on underneath. And about this time, Musilin, who doesn't have much patience anyway, got madder in hell, and he went to Craig, Colonel Crager, who was head of the 15th Air Force. And he said, give me an American pilot, an American plane, an American jump master, and let me give him the coordinates, and we'll go into Yugoslavia ourselves. This was on the, on the morning of the August the 9th. On the night of August the 10th, 9th, we were in Yugoslavia, and the evacuation started. And let me back up and say this. As I say, I can't prove what I'm about to say, but this is my feeling. The British were so convinced that we shouldn't go in there, that I think they wanted us to disappear. First of all, they tried to get the mission to be aborted and, and not take place at all. When that failed, uh, I think they would just as soon we'd be MIA, missing in action. When that failed, I think they just as soon we KIA, killed in action. So my feelings toward the British, I, I don't have much feelings for them. Do you know what is, what is their motivation, what is the reason for that behavior? What would, do you think? Yes, I, they, I can give you a very good reason for that behavior. Because the decision was made that they were going to abandon Mihailovic and, and back up Tito. And let me give, can I give you some background on that? See, the, way back in 41, when Tito, when, when Mihailovic uh, took off into the hills and organized his guerrilla warfare, he was put on the, he was hailed as a hero by the Allies. Everybody thought he was wonderful, and he was. He was put on the cover of Life magazine. He was nominated for Man of the Year. Unfortunately, Stalin beat him out, I think, at the end of the year. I'm not sure about that, but I think he did. So again, he was hailed as a hero, and, and, and the uh, Allies were backing him with guns and ammunition, and he was waging guerrilla warfare against the Germans. But the Germans are, if they're anything but efficient in, in torture and in, and in defending things, they decreed that for every German soldier that was killed, uh, there would be uh, 100 Serbs would die in, in retaliation. So uh, Eisenhower told uh, uh, Mihailovic, he said, wait until we have the second front. Uh, do your sabotage if you can, do what you can, but in the meantime, don't sacrifice that many uh, Serbs uh, for, by killing Germans. So then when Germany invaded Russia, Tito got into the picture. I, I think Stalin sent him, and he started uh, communizing the villages and, 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 and introduced the communist doctrine into the Serbian people and villages. And Mihailovic originally welcomed, you know, he said, the more people we have fighting the Germans, fine. But when he started communizing the villages, he said, whoa, whoa, they said, that would, that's politics. We don't want, we're, we're soldiers. We don't, we got to get involved in, in politics. We'll, let's, let's fight the Germans. Let's get them the hell out of here. And then when we're through, we can decide what kind of government we want. But Tito didn't listen to him. 
So to make a long story short, a civil war ensued between Mihailovich and Tito. Well, this put a dilemma on the, uh, on the Allies because now the, who were they going to back, Tito or Mihailovich? Now, I may be oversimplifying things. I'll give him Churchill credit. In order to make this decision, he sent a fellow in by the name of Klugman uh, into C. Tito. After interviewing and working and seeing how Tito worked, he was to go over to Mihailovich's territory and see how Mihailovich uh, was operating against the Germans, which was fine. This would have given him a, a good picture. This is what Tito was doing. This is what Mihailovich was doing. Unfortunately, Klugman happened to be a mole, a communist mole that uh, uh, interviewed Tito. Tito whined and dined him. Klugman was also an alcoholic. And Tito sold him a bill of goods. Klugman never bothered to go to see Tito or Mihailovich. He just stayed with Tito. He didn't get Mihailovich's side of the story. He went back to uh, Churchill and there's another fellow by the name of Deacon, who was also a mole for the Russians. He was in the uh, um, uh, British Secret Service, and he reported to Deacon also. And Deacon and Klugman went to, to um, uh, Churchill, and they said, oh, Tito's doing a wonderful job. He's fighting the Germans. Mihailovich isn't doing anything. He's collaborating with them. And they sold Churchill a bill of goods. And Churchill decided, okay, since that was the story, he would um, uh, back, t uh, back Tito. And he had to get, um, Stalin, of course, was thrilled. Uh, Roosevelt was a sick man, and he went along. They had put enough pressure on him. He went along with it. So the decision was made to back Tito and not Mihailovich. And that is why the British did not want Mihailovich uh, to get credit for rescuing uh, the airmen, because if they, if he rescued airmen, how could he be a collaborator? It didn't, it didn't make sense, you know. Hell, if he were a traitor, we had he had three OSS personnel: Jabilian, uh, Muslin, and Ryasich. He could turn them over to the Germans, who would have been tickled pink to have us, you know. He, we got while we were there. A, an intelligence mission composed of a history professor, McDowell, and Captain uh, Milo Dragovich, and radio operator Deviak, that came in to gather in information. We also brought, they also brought in a medical team, uh, a doctor and, and two technicians to take care of the guys that were wounded. I mean, they were, what, four, seven, uh, or seven or eight allied plus all the airmen that they could have turned over to the Germans that would have been tickled pink to have them. So what do you make of the, the I mean many years later after all these efforts the First World War and Second World War the Serbs uh, made and they were bombed in, in, uh, by NATO recently and so on. I can't say enough about the Serbs. I mean they were double-crossed, they were abandoned uh, I was asked when I was when I was with the partisans. Everything we were we were shadowed everywhere we went. We were not given free access like we were when I was with the Chetniks. But when I was with the partisans, um, there was always a partisan soldier with us that w w observed what we were doing. That uh, but every once in a while we managed to get away and uh, the, the farmer would ask us why are the Americans backing Tito and at that time I was what a 20 year old kid I didn't know much about anything I was I didn't know all the politics that was going on I was learning fast but I asked Eli Popovich I said Eli I don't understand all this and I said I, I don't understand why we are backing Tito I said, what, what can I tell you? Well, how can I answer the, this question? And he said, well, all you can say is Samo Bogzna. Only God, only God knows. Samo Bogzna. Samo Bogzna, yeah. So this is what I did, and it got me out. The Serbs are very religious, and they, when I say Samo Bogzna, they would accept that answer. 
But to answer your question, I, I, I have nothing but admiration for him. I have nothing but, but gratitude for what they did to my, to my boys, our boys, because without them, many of them would not have survived. And I have, there's a nice feeling for me. That, I mean, it's the most important thing that I've done in the war to, to rescue 513 people. I mean, that is, to me, is a, is, a, is a great accomplishment. Without the Serbs, I wouldn't have that feeling. Without Mihailovic, I wouldn't have that feeling. And without those 513, and let's say every one of them went married and had two, two children, that's at least 2,000 uh, uh, people that had another gener generation or two or three are now living because of the Serbs and the and Mihailovic. Don't ever, I never forget that. And as I told you, with, uh, one of the, the church groups that I uh, spoke to when, after my speech was over, I went out into the audience and we were uh, sitting at the table and we were watching some little children do the uh, Serbian dances and there was a, a teenage choir that sang and there was a commotion behind me and I looked around and the lady was lining up uh, children, small ones, you know, four or five up to teenagers and she said, you are an icon among the, the Serbs and they want to shake your hand so they can tell their children that they shook hands with a member of the Halyard Mission. Now that is a great, great honor for me. So anyway, that's what I think of the Serbs. <laughs> thank you so much. God bless you and take good care of your health. And thank you. And, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope to be in touch. I hope so too. <laughs>